Hello, everyone. We'd like to briefly touch on some new features in the EO software release 1.9. Um, just some feature, new features and some changes to existing features. There are three new types of palettes in 1.9. The first of those is by device palettes or by type palettes. By type palettes allow you to establish values for a single channel and those values can then be used for any other fixtures of that same type. So we'll just take a quick look at recording and using by device type palettes. Let's take a look at recording by type palettes. In this case, we're going to use a color palette as our example. So we select a channel and we put it at full. We then put it into a color. And now we do a record a color palette like we would normally. I'm going to use color palette 10 in this case. And the one difference in the command line now is we use the new by type button. You'll notice on the soft keys, uh, we have a couple of new buttons and we'll take a look at those others in other videos. So we select by type and hit enter. You'll now notice up on the uh, tile for the color palette, we get a little T that tells us this is a by type palette. So let's record this into a Q so we can demonstrate the next step. So we record Q10 and the display for channel 91 is in blue as it would be. If we, uh, we're now going to apply this to some other channels, we put them at full and we go color palette 10 enter. Those are now at the same color that they would be for the other palette uh, for palette one. So we'll do an update enter. And now we've got Q10 uh, as color palette 10 for all of these channels. Now let's take a look at what happens when we edit one of the other channels besides uh, the first one we did. If we do 92 and we come in and maybe we want that to be a slightly different color. So we'll come in and we'll make a slight change. And you'll notice over on our channel screen that we now have a red R. And what the red R is telling us is that the original information came from a palette and from referenced information and we've broken that connection. So it's telling us, reminding us what's going to, uh, what's occurring here, that this is now separate. When we do our update, we're now going to update Q10. It's still color palette 10, but the information is a little different. And we see that in blind, color palette 10, and you can see that that information is now displayed in white because it's not part of the original by type selection. You'll notice that our first channel, which is referred to as our default channel, is in blue, and the other channels that we applied the information to are now in magenta. And then the one we modified is in white, telling us that it's different. Move the mouse out of the way. If I modify my first channel, by selecting channel 91. And I'm going to do this in blind because it'll update automatically. And maybe we wanted to tweak that just a little bit. You'll notice that it changes. And so do the other, the other channels that are pulling their information from the default channel. And that's taking a quick look at by type palettes. So when you're working with by device palettes, channels in that fixture group can either follow the values from the default channel or they can be discrete. It's going to be worth you playing around with that feature a bit to understand when you do an update, whether the data is updating discreetly or updating back to the default channel. The second type of palettes that we've introduced is called absolute palettes. And absolute palettes are a way that you can assign a flag to a palette, and upon recall from that palette, the data is converted to absolute data rather than reference data. You're probably going to use absolute palettes mostly with intensity, and it allows you to duplicate the old group functionality that we had in our legacy products. So rather than the designer saying group one at full, we call from intensity palette one, if intensity palette one is an absolute palette, will yield the same result. And here's a quick demo on how to use absolute palettes. Now let's take a look at absolute palettes. Uh, for our example, we're going to use intensity palettes, uh, which is probably where you'll most frequently use uh, absolute palettes. So we're going to select some channels, and we're going to put them at full. And just like normal, we're going to record an intensity palette. The difference being that we're now going to make a slight change to the command line and click the absolute button. So just like with by type palettes, we get a little A now that says this is an absolute palette. So in the 
building palettes process. We're going to sneak those out uh, just like we would when we're working in our show. And we're now going to recall our palette. So if we do one through three in this case, intensity palette 10. What you'll notice the difference here is on the channel display, we're now displaying the standard full symbol in red as opposed to a palette name and designation. So when we record our cue, they just record as if you had manually set those levels, which just allows us to use, uh, to treat these much like an old style group with a set level. So you record the palette, you reapply it, and it's as if you just simply punch those numbers in manually. This also applies to when we go to do an update. So if I select channel two and I make a modification to it, when I update the queue, it's the same as if I had just set that number manually and it's not updating the palette. Now, if I want to change that, if I want to change the intensity palette back to a standard one, we select the intensity palette and we tap the absolute button again, which you notice on the command line, it now says absolute disabled and we hit enter and our flag goes away and now it's a standard intensity palette. If we make a modification to do an update at this point, it will update the palette. So that's a quick look at absolute palettes. So the third type of palette is called a locked palette. And when you place a lock flag on a palette, it protects that palette from being modified by a generic update command. Um, locking a palette is a good thing to do if you're using those palettes as building blocks in presets. Um, both locked and absolute flags can also be applied to presets, by the way, while I'm thinking about it. And here is a quick demo of applying a lock flag to a palette. Let's take a look at locked palettes. For locked palettes, we're going to use uh, focus palettes as our example. So if I select some channels and we turn them on and we're going to move them around as if we'd pointed them at a particular location on the stage and we're going to record a focus palette and we're going to apply a lock to it. This can be done after the palette is recorded as well. I actually want that to be focus palette 10 and now it's locked. And much like the other palettes, the new types, you'll now see that we have a little L in the bottom of the palette tab on the direct selects. So if we record this into a queue at this point, you'll now see that everything is normal. It's a, it's a focus palette 10 on those channels. The difference comes in now when we try to do a modification to that. So if we now take channel 92 and 93 and we move those fixtures, so we've tweaked them into a new place, you can notice over on our channel screen that we have the, the R reference saying that we've made a modification. When we do our update to our queue, those are simply recorded back in as hard values or as manual values instead of updating the palette itself because the palette is locked. So it will no, it'll no longer update from a, a standard queue update. We can remove the lock by simply selecting from a clear command line the focus palette. So we have focus palette 10 and we simply select the locked button again and it gives us lock disabled on the command line. And we hit enter and you'll notice that the L goes away and it's now a standard palette and if we make a change now and do an update it'll update the palette normally. And that's taking a look at locked palettes.